for our, our church culture that must change. I believe we're in an hour where the church is not believing what we read about, what we preach about, what we've been talking about. And so God is shifting that culture to a culture of pure belief. And that's where I am right now. Amen. I love what she said, a culture of pure belief. And that's what Joshua Giles carries. I love the fact that he's a man of character. And so integrity, and that is so needed. And I believe God has just really, within this conference, shifted something. And whether you're online or in person, God is doing a new thing. It's not just cliche, no. but it's the real thing because our prayers have been, God, we want to see the God of the Bible. That's we want to be the people of God yes. for real. Yes. So continue to fasten your seatbelt online audience and just know it goes up from here. Absolutely. God bless you. God bless. Thank you. Amen. And we call upon the God of justice. We pray for justice in this region. In the name of Jesus, God of justice, rent the heavens and come down. Right every wrong. Balance the scales in Jesus' name. We look for the God of justice. Lord, Yahweh sit the new. The Lord, Yahweh Shama. The Lord God ever present. Elohim and on we exalt the name of the king, the king of kings. Let your name address everything in this place. Let your name, your holy name, your powerful name, let it, let it address, hallelujah, this atmosphere. Break up this atmosphere. Hallelujah, Lord, we're going higher. We're not going back down. We're going higher from here. We're going higher, God. In the name of Jesus, we call on the strong name of Jesus, the holy and matchless name of Jesus, the powerful name of the Christ, the Christos, the Holy One of Israel. There's none like you, God. There's none beside you, none before you, and none after you. We thank you. We bless you because you are sovereign. So have your way. We move out of the way, God. Oh, my, 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 second of all, Sakaya. We move out of the way, oh, King. We move, we move, we move, we move. Come on, say, we move, we move, we move. Come on, we move out of your way. We move, we move, we move, we move out of your way, King. We move, we move. Come on, stand on your feet and begin to cut up, oh, and petition. Petition, hallelujah, petition the God of heaven. Father, we want you to move. We want you to move. Release your voice. Release your voice like you did in the garden. Father, when your voice walk through the garden, let your voice walk through this place. Walk through this place. Address the sickness. Address the infirmities. Address mental illness. Address poverty. Address brokenness. Address it, oh God, broken families. Address it, oh God. Bring restoration, oh King. Oh, Oh God, so he got all Restore families, God. Restore, restore, release the anointing in the spirit of Elijah that turned the hearts of the Father back to the Son, and the hearts of the Son back to the Father. Where the God of Elijah release the spirit of Elijah in his place. Restore, turn the heart of the king. You, oh God, you turn the heart of the king. Any way you want to draw back the wayward child, draw them back. Let them get a call when they get back home. That it's already done. Let them get a call that the way has been made. Let them get a call that it's done. That the body has been healed. That the mind has been made whole. Let them get a call, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we call on you. In a tub of a sincere, from a sincere place. Father, we need you. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We will not exalt ourselves against your holiness. We will not. Father, we need 
to deal with our hearts, God. Oh, God, we pray for the psalmist to sing, to sing, to sing. Oh, God, open up the prophetic womb. Open up the prophetic spigot of heaven. Oh, God, let prophecy come. Let a revelation come even through the song. Lord, sing through your psalmist. Prophesy through your psalmist. Prophesy through your minstrels. Prophesy through the dancers. Prophesy. Spirit of revelation, come. Spirit of prophecy, come. Oh, wind of God, low. Wind of God, low. Speak. Let the ruach of God come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we speak to the prophetic wombs in this place. Every prophetic womb be open. Every prophetic mind be unlocked. Every prophetic womb give birth. In the name of Jesus, Lord, sing through the singers. Sing through them. Sing through the thomas. Sing through them, Father. Lord, let there be a response from heaven. In the name of Jesus, oh, God. Horabande soto bande i katanda la la bosai rende la 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 bosa ta la la bokoma ma 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 se i katanda la 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 bokoma ma i rebe be 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 soto ba ba haya horabande so we decree and declare that we live under a perpetual open heaven we decree and we declare hallelujah notable signs notable wonders notable miracles notable signs. In the name of Jesus, signs in the heavens. Lord, we decree that we are the sign. In the name of Jesus, Father, we decree. Hallelujah. What am I so that the gates are open? We decree. Hallelujah. That the doors are open. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is the King of Glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Come on, Rebesoto. We lift up our hands, and the ancient gates shall be open. The gates of our minds are open. Father, we say, have your way. We give you full permission, King. We give you full permission, King. We give you full permission. Father, we submit to your will. Father, break our flesh. Father, break our flesh. Father, break our flesh in this place. Father, we thank you. I want to hear your voices. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on, Rebebebe Sotora Rabasa, Ikata Bababose, Ikata da 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 of being, a new way of speaking, a new way of moving, a new way of believing. Oh, in Jesus' name, open up every gift, Father. Unlock us, Lord. Unlock us. Unblock the flow. Father, unblock the flow in our souls. Unblock the soul is in the seed of us. So unblock our spirit, man. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, I see the fire of God. Oh, fire of God. Fire of God. Release your fire, King. Release your fire, God. Fire of God, come. Fire, God. Intensify. Intensify tonight, God. Intensify. Intensify. Let your grace intensify. Let your spirit intensify. Give us a greater measure of your spirit. Give us a greater measure of your glory. We thank you for a greater measure tonight. A greater measure tonight. Cause the water levels to rise. Father, we don't want to be ankle deep anymore. We don't want to be knee deep anymore. But 
we want to be waist deep, Father. Take us waist deep, God. Give us the grace to push. Give us the grace to press. Give us the grace to press. Give us the grace, God. Father, we offer you nothing that costs us nothing. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you. So, Father, we call upon the angels of the living God. Angels of worship. Angels of war. Angels of war. So, wealth. Angels of praise. Oh, God, release. Cause them to descend and ascend. Father, there is an angel. There's angels descending and ascending. And they cry, holy. Holy is the Lamb of God. Worthy are you to be praised. They cry, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. The whole earth. It is full of your glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you're going to speak tonight. We're going to hear what we've never heard. We're going to see what we've never seen. For no eyes have seen, nor ear have heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man. What you have prepared for us on tonight, in Jesus' name. And so we look for it, God. We want it, God. We're desperate, God. Give us a desperation. Father, set us on fire again. Father, set us on fire. Lord, we didn't come here just to see a man. We came to see you. Our eyes are on you. We want to move. There is a move. We decree there is a move. We decree there is a momentum. We decree the kingdom is here. The kingdom of here. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. Come on and say the kingdom of God is here. Come on, the kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. Release the kingdom. Come on, release it. Release the kingdom of God that's in you. Release it. The kingdom of God is here. It's not there. It's not there, but it's in you. Release the kingdom. Father, we thank you for a kingdom and take over. A kingdom advancement. We decree that we are taking over in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything that you promised we're coming for it we're coming for it father wake up the warrior wake up the champion wake them up wake them up wake up the warrior wake up the champion in the name of jesus wake up the worshiper wake up the prophet wake them up god wake them up god oh god wake up the worshiper in the name of jesus lord we want we said it is so father your word your name is on the line you promised that whatsoever we would ask in your name and if we know that you hear us we have the petition for which we've asked you and now God we look to you in expectation full expectation father the expectation is high in this room in Jesus name so we know we're going to see what we've never seen we decree that we're going to see it we're going to see it. 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 Open our eyes to see. Open our eyes to see, Father. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, the only begotten of the Father. The one that's seated at the right hand of the Father. The chief intercessor. Who's ever lived to make intercession. Father, your blood still speaks. Oh, God, we thank you that you're praying even now with us and for us. And you're among us. And among those that help us you are our help you are our help in jesus name oh god we thank you father we glorify you in the name of yeshua Come on, we're going higher.
to rabo sherada yandera rabo to rama sherada la rabo si to raba Come in your glory, come in your 
your power. Come in your magnificence, oh God. Move among us, oh God. In spite of ourselves, oh God, move in this place. Abba, position yourself in our hearts. Oh Abba, show off. Show off your glory. Let your glory cover this place as the waters cover the sea, oh God. For you said that the latter will be greater than the former. And so, Father, we come with an expectation. An expectancy, oh God, not for our neighbors, oh God, but for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for our children. We're desperate, Abba. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We need a move of God. Do you need a move of God? Do you need a move of God? Yeah, God. This is your people's cry, God. We want you to do greater than what you did last night. We want you to do greater than what you did this morning. We want you to do greater than what you did this afternoon, God. We want you to blow our mind, oh God. Blow our mind, oh God. That we will forever be changed, oh God. As we yield all that we are to all that you are, we submit ourselves, oh God. We open up our hearts. We're willing to be made willing even where we're not willing, Abba. We're willing, oh God, to meet you. We're willing to lay it all down for the sake of the cross. We're willing, Abba. We're willing, Abba. Here we are, move in this place. Breathe on us, oh God, everyone in this place, oh God. Let them have a personal, intimate, up-close experience, oh God. You know everything, every need, oh God, every want, every desire, every hope, every expectation, every desire, God. You know it. You know it, Abba. And so here we are, recognizing without you, this means nothing. Without you, Abba, this means nothing. Our travel was in vain. Our words was in vain. Oh, Father, we give to you now a free will offering with the fruit of our lips, Abba. And we thank you for who you are, God. Who you are in the earth, oh God. Who you are in the earth, oh God. We do nothing first without blessing you and honoring you, God. So we salute you, Abba, your magnificence, your power, and your glory. We stand in all of you, Abba. And we say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in the earth as it is already done in heaven, oh God. We want you, Abba. We thank you, God, that we are your beloved identity, oh God, that we move and breathe and have our very being. It is in you, God, that we serve. It is you, God, we're like deer that pants after the water brook. Hallelujah. So I soul pass out to thee in the dry and thirsty land where there is no water to behold your glory, to see you, God, as we have never seen thee before, God. Your loving kindness is better than life. Abba, how can we do anything but serve you? How can we do anything but exalt your name? How can we do anything but lift your name up and declare that you are God in the earth, that you are God in our lives, that you are God, and if you never, ever, 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 ever do anything again, you've done enough. You saved us. You delivered us. You call us by our name. You said that we are your beloved, and that this day, this night, this hour, this moment right now, God, that you're going to meet us. God, that you're going to hear us. God, you know. You know, for you are omnipotent, you are omniscient, oh God, you are omnipresent, and we worship you, and we honor you, and we give you the glory, oh King of kings, and the Lord of lords, make your entrance, make yourself known in this place, oh God, move in this place, our God, our King, our Lord. Your glory, your presence, and 
in your magnificence. For we love you, Abba, with everything. We give you everything. We give you everything. This time, this night, we yield our hearts to you. We open up our hearts to you. We surrender everything to you, God. Search us. Try us. Say, Abba, if there be anything in us that's wicked and lead us in the way of everlasting, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, Abba, let it be acceptable in your sight for you are strength and a redeemer. How do we stand in your presence, oh God, asking for anything except first, oh God, we ask you, oh God, to search us, to create in us clean hearts, renew a right spirit in us. Forgive us, Abba, for anything that we've done up until this point, oh God, that was against your will and your way, your purpose and your plan. Forgive us, Abba, oh Father, for the person we didn't smile at, oh Father, for the person we looked at kind of crazy. Father, forgive us. We want your heart. We want your mind. We want you in order to move into the place, Abba that we can catch the man to God. First, let us catch you, Abba. First, let us catch you, Abba. First, let us catch you, Abba. First, let us catch you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Abba, with everything. Oh, Father, we rend our hearts and not our garments. We rend everything to you, Abba, for you are great. You are the I am that I am. And we stand on holy ground. And we take up our shoes in your presence, oh God. And we yield and we bow. And we welcome you into this place. We welcome you into these broken vessels, oh God. We welcome you into our hearts. We welcome you, Abba. We glorify you. And it is so, it is so. If you're in agreement with me, that you believe God, that only Abba, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. If you believe God and only God, stand to your feet. Oh, for the words that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to all who believe. Father, we are so honored, hallelujah, to be in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we raise our level of faith and expectation. Hallelujah. And we know that you will meet us here tonight. Hallelujah. In fact, your spirit is already here. And so we lift up our hands in your presence. Come on, lift up your hands in, your, in his presence. Hallelujah. And speak in your heavenly language. Come on. Come on, lift up your worship. Lift up your worship. Can you feel him? 
can feel him, I can see him, King of glory is here. All you have to do is say, welcome. Let me hear you sing. Welcome. Come on, let me hear you sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, welcome the Lord in this place. That's all it is. Lord, we welcome you. Come on, sing it just a few more times. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Jesus. Welcome. Come on, one more time. We welcome you. Now if you welcome the Lord in this place, give him a hand praise. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, welcome the King of glory. He is the Lord strong and mighty. Hey, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to draw your attention to the video. I believe that there's a video coming. Welcome to the Mantle Conference. This year's theme is the changing of the guard, repositioning for the new era. This power-packed prophetic gathering is hosted by none other than Apostle Joshua Giles and includes kingdom builders, Cindy Trim, John Hanna, Tudor Bismarck, Brian Meadows, Ryan Lestrange, Matt Sorger, Ty Trebek, Kiara Sheard, and Pam Vanette. For more conference details, please visit our website at www.joshuagiles.com. Sessions start promptly at 9 a.m. in the morning, and you don't want to miss the prophetic address by Joshua Giles at 10 a.m. There are a host of other speakers throughout the day that you don't want to miss. And join us tomorrow night for Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Please see your conference packet for a detailed schedule of events. Are you ready to go to the nation? Join Apostle Joshua Giles as he travels to Greece and Israel July 17th through the 30th in 2023. In Greece, we will walk the footsteps of the Apostle Paul and experience his ministry journey through the book of Acts. We will tour the land of the Bible and the Holy Land of Israel. This will culminate in an apostolic and prophetic conference in Jerusalem. This will be a life-changing experience. Register today by paying your deposit and signing up at the registration table in the lobby. Have you picked up your copy of Prophetic Forecast? This book has been number one on Amazon and Barnes & Noble bestseller for months. This week, it's in stores and available nationwide. Get your copy today and don't miss out on the book signing in between sessions on Friday, April 22nd at the Barnes & Noble in Eden Prairie at 3 p.m. Along with the book, Apostle Giles has done a series of teachings called Your Prophetic Forecast. These five teachings will revolutionize your life and activate you prophetically. Video teachings include Capturing Heaven's Economy, Thriving in a Famine, global reset and the rise and fall of nations, a new era of technology, releasing the Issachar anointing, and more. Order your digital set today at the reception table. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. We have another quick announcement. We have another quick announcement, but at this time, we are going to bring up our next psalmist. Um, come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You're in for a treat. Hallelujah. You're in for a treat. We're getting ready to hear the anointed sounds. Hallelujah. Of Prophetess Adrian Bynum. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on. You, we getting ready. We getting ready to go to another level. We getting ready to go to another place in God. We getting ready to be shifted to another location. Come on and bless God. And we're getting ready to hear from the anointed psalmist, Jenny Weaver. Can we bless the Lord for them? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
us tonight. Come on, somebody shout it together with the voice of triumph. Oh, come on, y'all. What you waiting on? Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, use your voice like a trumpet. Come on, use your voice like a shofar. And blow it tonight. Jump. Here we go. Bless the Lord. On 
Keys. 
today um, to be able to give you know the body of Christ an understanding of what mentals are and that mentals are falling they are transferable they seek succession and a lot of what we're feeling may be the fact that God is trying to show us that we are either operating under a mental we ourselves have a mental and it's a call to do the greater work that um, the world so desperately needs. And it'll, it's going to take a, a, a mental, not just the anointing, but the mental. So I'm hoping to be able to share what the difference is between the anointing and the mental and how we can access it. Mm, people have come from near and far. Mm -hmm. They're hungry mm -hmm. for something. Yeah. What do you hope to deposit? In well, I, I really pray, and I've been praying. I just came off of a 10-day fast, mm -hmm. and I'm praying that the Lord would really empower everyone to understand that their life really does matter, mm -hmm. that they are not a, um, a, a coincidence, mm -hmm. that they are here for such a time as this, and they don't have to be victims of circumstances, mm -hmm. that God has given them resources. He's given them power 
and the resources are spiritual resources and then we live in a world of abundance and I'm praying that God will um, actually use the anointing that is going to be resident as a catalyst to turn gifts on and resuscitate our faith and our hope because we need that, you know, coming out of the pandemic and being able to navigate the new normal. So I'm praying that God will help each one of us to understand we fit in the big scheme of things and to give biblical tools and wisdom and strategies that each person can walk away with and apply pragmatically and immediately in their lives. I love it. When people are walking away from this conference, they go back home to their jobs, to their families. Yeah. What do you hope that they take away? I hope what, that they are talking about. Yeah, I hope that they take away that they are the solution mm. for the problems that they're praying wow. about. Wow. And that God has already given each one of us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Most of, of it is in potential form. And it just has to be acknowledged and exercised. Mm. Um, and each one of us need to find a platform of expression. Um, and I think the greatest expression is to totally be who we are and everything that God has commissioned us to be as individuals, both naturally and spiritually, who we are in Christ. So each one of us matter. And if it wasn't so, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be here for such a time as this. Such a time as yes. this. Any words you want to say to the online audience? Yes, I, I want to encourage each one of you to continue to trust God, to make Bible study a daily activity. God said to Joshua, meditate on my word day and night. If therein you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. So I'm believing the Lord that in this season, no matter what's going on with you, through the word of God, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you are going to defy all odds. You are going to come out of this stronger and better and wiser. You are the light, a light in this world. You're a city that is set on the hill. So let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You can do this. God is with you. Don't despair. You are going to come out, and when you come out, you're going to come out with more. You're going to come out better and stronger because we all overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. God bless. Amen. Dr. Cindy Trim, thank you so much. Thank you Amen. for the interview. Continue to be blessed. Amen. 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 I was so encouraged uh, when we got married. Because I got married right before you, and I was 48 years old. We yeah. So you've been met. What? When did you get married? Break these chains. Break these chains. We declare. 
declare freedom in the room. We declare freedom in the room. We declare freedom in the room. Come on, come on. We declare freedom in the room. Freedom in the room. We declare freedom in the room. Every shackle must break now. Every chain must break now. Deliverance happens now. This is your day of deliverance. This is your day of freedom. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, y'all say. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. you leave oh, yes, so your, your mantle for glory, mantle. For glory. Your, mantle. your mantle in the spirit, the spirit. you are mantle for the warfare you are mantle for the next level you are mantle you are mantle oh ya na 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 ya ra baso riande lift your hands if you receive the word of the lord Oh, angels are ascending and descending in this room right now. Angels are ascending and descending all around the room and even in the back. There are angels on assignment. What do you need from the Lord? Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord say, ask of me. Ask again. Ask, of me. Ask now. Ask of me. I hear the Lord say, Ask of me and I will give it. Yes, Lord. For you've been in the season far too long. I hear the Lord say, Here I I heard you in the midnight hour. I've seen the tears that you cried. I know the 
trial that you face ask for me and see my mighty hand my mighty hand of deliverance and salvation will move in the land again ask of me ask of me ask of me just reverence the Lord and thank Him. Every single person reverencing the Lord, honoring God in this moment. I won't pass you by. I won't look you over tonight. I see you and I hear you when you didn't know. That I was listening, the Lord says, do you not see me sounding here? Do you not hear me calling your name in the heavens? Come on, keep worshiping the Lord. Miracles are taking place right now in the atmosphere. I decree and declare that bodies are being healed right now. I decree and declare that you'll be delivered right in your seat. In the name of Jesus, deliverance is here because Jesus is here. And he's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. Come on, that's it. Let out your own song. Just let the people sing it. Just let them sing it. Fill the room. As they press in. Keep pressing in. Yeah. 
Come on, the spirit of the Lord is in this room tonight. Come on, somebody lift up your hands all over the room. Come on, you heard the sound that's being released. He says, ask of me. There's so much expectancy in this room that in an atmosphere like this, anything can happen. Can you take the next 60 to 120 seconds and just pull on God in this room? Come on, just pull. Come on, pull. Come on, open your mouths all over the place. Open your mouths all over the room. Bless him with the fruit of your lips. Come on, bless him with the fruit of your lips in the room. Come on, we're under an open heaven. Come on, the heavens are open. The heavens are open. Something's stirring in this place. Osha, come on, something's stirring in this room. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, just pull for another 60 seconds. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, it says, and when they had prayed, I believe that there's some praying that's been going on in the building. Listen, this is the first conference I've ever done where they sent me videos of all of you lined up in the hallways this morning, praying in the spirit and saturating the whole building. It was such an atmosphere of prayer. Stay there for me, Minshew. It was such an atmosphere of prayer that you could feel it just by being in the midst of it and by hearing it through the sound and watching it on the video. That means that some prayer has been going up on the grounds of Minneapolis and throughout this city. Come on, anybody been praying in the place? I've been informed that on your flights coming here, that many of you that don't even know each other have bumped into other mantle conference goers and you guys took over the planes on your way here. And so I just believe we're about to have an Acts chapter 4 and verse 31 moment. It says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled. It says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe that there is enough power in this room tonight that when we give God a corporate collective praise, that the place will be shaken with the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, anybody hungry for the Lord tonight? So what I want us to do is just do a row check really quick. I want you to check your row. Make sure you're sitting beside somebody that's hungry, expectant. Make sure you're sitting beside somebody that's ready for the word. Because we're about to take lift off in this room. We're going into a dimension that we've never been in before. And if you would place a demand on the anointing. Woo! I can already feel the wind pushing in the house. If you would place a demand. Come on, all the way in the back. All the way in the back. Come on, somebody. Hold on. We're getting ready to bring Dr. Trim up in just two minutes. But can we just raise the, the level in the room for just a moment? Because see, there is a difference between those that are thermometers that can gauge an atmosphere and those that are thermostats that know how to set it. And I know that the atmosphere is already ready, but we can take it up another level. I believe that if we give God a corporate praise in this room, that heaven is about to touch down. Come on, church. Give him a corporate shout. Give him a corporate praise. Come on, let the people praise their God. Give him a praise that says, I've got victory. Give him a praise that says, my God has delivered me. Come on, somebody.
somebody that's been set free, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. No music, just the voices. Come on, there's a wind coming in the room. There are angels in this place right now dropping down answers. There are angels in this room right now. Oh, come on, somebody. Clap those hands and bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited for what the Lord is doing tonight. I want us to take a moment and just greet somebody around you and tell them, I'm so glad you're here. Amen. We're getting ready to go into our announcements. Amen. We're getting ready to go into our announcements. No, but miracles might be breaking out in the back. Somebody just got healed. Oh, there's a glory in the room tonight. All right, all right, all right. We can already feel that the atmosphere is pregnant. And we're ready for a move of God. How many of you ready for a move? Amen. But we got to do the announcements first. So can you please, amen, let's gather ourselves and take your seats. And then, y'all already acting up in the room. We're trying to behave, but somebody's acting up in here. give you 60 more seconds to release that praise that's in your spirit I don't know but I see a wave hitting the plate there's a wave Let's collect ourselves. I'm trying to quiet them down, but somebody's trying to dance. Well, come on and dance then. Somebody's about to get set free on your rope. If y'all keep pushing. Now, 
now come on somebody give God a big shout of praise come on give him a big shout of praise come on give him a big shout of praise in the house come on give him a praise that shakes your entire row amen listen God has been doing so many amazing things in this room we've got testimonies coming in left and right of breakthroughs healings deliverance and and just those of you that have been getting filled with the power of God and so we honor the Holy Spirit for entering into this place can we just give God a big praise for his spirit that's here amen listen there are several announcements and we're going to give them to you very quickly so uh, we want you to turn your attention to the screen at this time welcome to the mantle conference this year's theme is the changing of the guard repositioning for the new era this power-packed prophetic gathering is hosted by none other than apostle joshua giles and includes kingdom builders Cindy Trim, John Hanna, Tudor Bismarck, Brian Meadows, Ryan Lestrange, Matt Sorger, Ty Trebek, Kiara Sheard, and Pam Vanette. For more conference details, please visit our website at www.joshuagiles.com. Sessions start promptly at 9 a.m. in the morning, and you don't want to miss the prophetic address by Joshua Giles at 10 a.m. There are a host of other speakers throughout the day that you don't want to miss. And join us tomorrow night for Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Please see your conference packet for a detailed schedule of events. Are you ready to go to the nation? Join Apostle Joshua Giles as he travels to Greece and Israel, July 17th through the 30th in 2023. In Greece, we will walk the footsteps of the Apostle Paul and experience his ministry journey through the book of Acts. We will tour the land of the Bible and the Holy Land of Israel. This will culminate in an apostolic and prophetic conference in Jerusalem. This will be a life-changing experience. Register today by paying your deposit and signing up at the registration table in the lobby. Have you picked up your copy of Prophetic Forecast? This book has been number one on Amazon and Barnes & Noble bestseller for months. This week, it's in stores and available nationwide. Get your copy today and don't miss out on the book signing in between sessions on Friday, April 22nd at the Barnes & Noble in Eden Prairie at 3 p.m. Along with the book, Apostle Giles has done a series of teachings called Your Prophetic Forecast. These five teachings will revolutionize your life and activate you prophetically. Video teachings include Capturing Heaven's Economy, Thriving in a Famine, Global Reset and the Rise and Fall of Nations, A New Era of Technology, Releasing the Issachar Anointing, and more. Order your digital set today at the reception table. And again, we are so excited to have so many uh, pastors, leaders, apostles, prophets that are in the room. Can we just honor the Lord for all of our guests, all that have been ministering? And we would like to welcome our online viewers at this time. There are thousands of you that are watching, so hit that share button and let others know we are live. Come on, church, let's welcome them in by just giving God praise for them. Amen. How many of you have the prophetic forecast book already? Look at all the hands. I don't know what y'all did, but you sold out the stores all around the country. And so my publisher contacted me and told me that they are out of books in the warehouse. There are none left. And so I want to thank you for making it a number one Barnes & Noble bestseller, a number one Amazon bestseller. Y'all wasn't playing. You went and got the book. And so thank you so much. And for those of you that want to be a part of the signing, it's going to be at Barnes & Noble in Eden Prairie at 3 p.m. tomorrow. So we've adjusted the time uh, for you. 
but we're going to move all of this out of the way. Remember, tomorrow night, we're wearing our conference T-shirts, and it, they sold out within like an hour. So I know that there are many of you that did not get them, uh, so you're just going to have mantle on in the spirit. You're just going to have mantle by faith because we sold out of the shirts. But um, at this time, what I want to do is shift gears, and we are preparing for an amazing word that I know is going to change your life. How many of you have been looking forward to this night? Amen. So we're not going to prolong the time. I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to bring up a general in the kingdom of God. This woman of God has touched so many of our lives and I can remember we uh, did an event uh, so many years ago with uh, Dr. Trim, and she was such a blessing to our ministry, and I know that the Lord is going to use her in a powerful way. She is literally shaking nations with the anointing that is on her life. So can we at this time give God a big praise, amen, for Dr. Cindy Trim as she comes. Come on, church, we can do better than that. of you are excited to be here today. I believe the Lord is going to do something specific. I had a dream uh, this morning. You may take your seat. And in the dream, I saw that God was going to be, I love you too. <laughs> I saw God was going to be um, doing some specific things in each one of you. And what I have to share, you will probably have to go home and unpack it over um, the course of a few days. Um, and I wanted to give you enough because there are so many different conferences that are going on. And each one of the conferences are um, presented with a vision in mind. There's a specific vision that the convener of the conference has when they put the conference together. And before we proceed any further, we want to stand and acknowledge this young apostle and for what God is doing in your life. My, my assignment for the next couple of years until um, my death is to undergird the next and to um, put the tools in your hands so that you can succeed. A lot of us have gone ahead of you and ours have been trial and error, but yours does not have to be. And it's just an honor to be here to stand to undergird you in what you're called to do and um, to be a part of those shoulders that you stand on. And prayerfully, you will do um, the kingdom well. We need, we need solid men and women of God um, who have the heart of the people at the center of what they're doing, and God himself will give success. When I was young in ministry, God asked me, he said, Cindy, does it matter where I put you? in the continuum that we call the kingdom? Does it matter whether you are planting and you don't see a harvest or you're watering and you see a little harvest? So I put you on the other end where others have gone before you and planted in water and you receive the big harvest. And I said, really, it doesn't make a difference to me where you put me. And I feel as if my, my greatest gift is to be able to be one that plants and someone else can come behind me and water, and then uh, the next generation will receive the harvest. And so I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve your vision. I'm here to serve you, all of you as the people of God. And forgive me in advance if I give too much or I speak too fast, or I'm here a little bit over time. I'm hoping that I'm not. I see the timer that I'm there. But if this was the last time I ministered the word of God, I wanted to give you something that you can go home with and something that you will be able to have immediate application. I've been to so many conferences and so have you, 
where you just take notes and you just fill up a notebook and you go home and you put the notebook away without the intention of extrapolating even if it was one principle and apply it immediately. And I'm going to encourage each one of you to decide which uh, revelation or which seed or what principle or what strategy I'm about to share with you, you as an individual will go home and apply immediately. Um, if there is no application to a revelation, there'll be no manifestation and you end up with frustration. And there's a lot of frustrated believers. Um, and I've discovered that we're just going through the motion now. You know, coming to services like this is like securing an a, um, insurance policy in case of fire. You've got this insurance policy. Um, but I believe that this is the generation where God is going to begin to convert. He's going to convert Christians into believers. And we have a lot of Christian non-believers. And um, the Bible said that there's going to be a performance of those things believed. And it's time for manifestation. And it, it's really time for you to have a visitation from God in your home. And so I'm, I'm decreeing your zip code a place for divine visitation. And we're just coming out of the Passover. Would you permit me to do this? I decree and declare right now, your home is covered by the blood. You see, the covering, the Passover, really was an activity that should, be, should have been memorialized. And it is um, actually highlighted when you take communion. Communion takes you all the way back to the original intent and the original act. The act was recorded in the book of Exodus. Where God said to the children of Israel after nine plagues, the tenth plague would be a judgment on the firstborn so that Pharaoh would have no successor. And God said to them, I want you to kill a lamb that you've raised as a part of your family. I want you to feel the emotional connection to this lamb. You raise it for 14 days. At the end of 14 days, all of the community should come out, your entire family, and select this lamb. And then the entire family, depending on the size of the family, you are to slaughter this lamb, pour the blood into a basin, and then take hyssop and dip it in the blood and put it over the lentil or the door and the doorpost of the entry point of your house. No one is to go out of the house until there's deliverance. I want you to bake bread without yeast, put on your shoes, because what I'm about to do is going to happen swiftly. So he takes a, a group of oppressed individuals that were marginalized and ostracized and rejected. And he says to them, tomorrow, things are going to be different. When you leave, I want you to borrow the wealth, the riches that is represented in jewelry. And I want you to go and demand that they give it to you. And Throughout the night, I'm going to send a death angel. And the death angel will pass over you. And when the death angel passes over you, you will begin to understand that it's because of the blood. And that blood will protect your property. That blood would protect your personhood. That blood would protect your progress 
and your prosperity and your posterity. Everything that is under that roof is protected. Your dreams, your vision, your destiny, your gifts, your talents, anything that is under that blood, I'll protect. You will be passed over, but not passed up. When you walk out of here, you're walking out under the blood. Your personhood is going to be protected. For some of you, this is the last day for verbal abuse, physical abuse. You're going to go home, and your abuser, even if they attempt to raise their hand, it's going to be stuck. You're going to go home and you're going to apply the blood. And you're going to walk through that house with a brand new authority. And you're going to clear the atmosphere of every spirit that has been oppressing you and tormenting you. When you go home, you are going to have the best sleep ever. Worry is not going to be there. Anxiety is not going to be there. The depression is not going to be there. You don't believe me. Oh, you don't believe me. There's no amen in the house. You see, when you say amen, you are saying you are doing something in the atmosphere. You are establishing something. You are saying, so let it be established eternally for me in the heavens and in the earth. That's what amen means. The person on your left and right may not feel like you feel. But you need to reactivate your faith. We, we live in a time where the church is indifferent. And we're going to jump and shout. But we're not going to connect our faith to it because we don't want to be disappointed anymore. Can I get a sure you're right? But God is going to visit you. And it's going to happen tonight. Right in your seat. Right where you're sitting has been assigned as your miracle chair. We're going to be sharing some things that's going to revolutionize your life. This is the last day you're going to feel this way. Tomorrow is going to be a brand new day for you and your children. You're going to get your passion back. You're going to get your joy back. You're going to get your hope back. You're not going to be depressed any longer. You don't even know what is oppressing you, but you're being delivered from it right now. You're going to believe again. You're going to hope again. Your wealth is on the way. It really is. You're going to walk out of here wealth creators. Money is going to appear out of thin air for you. You know, you're employed, but that's just your chewing gum money. That's just money that you take your girlfriend to lunch with. In the days to come, you're going to look in your bank accounts and you're going to say, oh, I forgot that two million was over here.
You're going to be able to put your mother and father in a mansion. Something they couldn't do for you, but you're going to do for your parents. You're going to put your children and grandchildren in the best of schools. And your nieces and your nephews. And your godchildren. And you wouldn't even feel the pinch. You are no longer going to talk about being debt free. What debt? You're going to bankroll the kingdom. In the days to come, you're going to be insulted when preachers ask for $1,000. Many of your churches that you attend will not have to ask for an offering. You're just going to give it automatically. And your first fruit? Your first fruit is going to be 10 times as much as your current salary. That's annual salary. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. I don't have to get emotional. I don't have to give you a fake anything. I'm telling you what's about to happen. There's going to be a transfer of wealth. And you are going to be one of the ones that are going to be transferring it. You're not going to be waiting. The Bible said, listen, Given it shall be given you of good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall what? Man, given to your bosom. You are not waiting for someone to give to you. You are the giver. You are the benefactor. Why do you always think of yourself as the, the receiver? You are the giver. You are no longer going to be a beneficiary of any man. You are going to be heaven's beneficiary, but earth's benefactor. I'm going to say it again because you didn't get this. You're not going to wait on any man to open any door. They can close any door they want. Because God is going to anoint you to build your own door and open it for yourself. If they don't invite you around the table, you're going to build one and invite yourself. There is someone in here. You came. You came by um, faith. When you go home, you are faced with some financial um, challenges. But you took the money because God told you 
So come here. There's, 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 there's one lady. Who is that lady? Is that you? Come here. Come here. Come here. She didn't wait for anyone, that lady right there. You're going to sit right beside Shamalia. Do you have the cash app? Do you have cash app? Sit right beside Shamalia. Give her your cash app name. And by the time you get to your hotel room, there's going to be $1,000 waiting for you. Shout out, receive it! You're not just going to say amen. When a revelation hits you, it may not hit the person on your left and right. You're going to shout, I receive it. Amen. Your life is about to change permanently for the best. You got to activate your faith. You've got to engage in the message, in the anointing as it's flowing. Don't try to figure out how it's going to happen. You will never be in this state another day in your life. This is the poorest you will ever be. This is the poorest you will ever be. You will bankroll kingdom initiatives. Your hands are blessed. This is the last non productive season for you. The bottom line of your businesses is about to change. Your hands are blessed. With those hands, you're going to write best-selling books. With those hands, you're going to own multi-million dollar and trillion dollar companies. With those hands, you're going to build your own mansions. With those hands, you're going to take authority within your region. Not just your family in your region. When your hands go up in prayer, angels will recognize your authority. God is shifting you into another realm of power. I can't hear you. That's too weak for me. Ooh. Your family is blessed because you were born in it. Right now, it is official. You become the Joseph to your family. You are about to get promotions in the workplace. As God releases the mantle of Esther upon you. Mantles are neither male nor female. You are going to go into your boss's office or wherever you're working from, and you're going to ask for a promotion and you're going to ask for a raise. And the scepter of favor is going to be extended to you. It shall be this week. It shall be. There are 10 of you that are about to be fired. You're going to say, thank you. That door is closed, but a new door is open. 
you're going to be hired in your dream job. You are not going to curse anybody because your, your sustenance doesn't come from a man. It comes from heaven. God was only using them, but he's going to use someone greater. Someone that's going to recognize your gift and cultivate your gift. The atmosphere that you are working in is about to change. The, but the bar of expectation is about to change. You are going to start working in an environment of excellence that's going to put a demand on your gifts. You are the answer to some industry. I see someone that works in the hospital, you're getting ready to be promoted. You are a medical doctor and you are no longer going to walk in as a medical doctor. You are about to become the chief of staff. That is the word of the Lord for you. I see someone, another doctor, there's a group of you that has been talking. God is going to give you your own hospital. God is going to give you your own clinic. Something is about to shift for you. Something is about to change for you. I see someone in here, you're writing a grant and you are going to receive a favorable response. And they're going to give you more than what you expected. There were three people, and I see this very clearly. Computers are about to have a glitch as they change over. And when it sp spits out, your bill is going to say 0, 0.00. There's a complete computer glitch going on right now in your favor. It's going to happen. Hashtag, you will testify. There is one woman in here, you've been trying to get pregnant. In two months from today's date, you're going to take a test. Your baby is on the way. God just healed your womb. I'm excited. I need to be the godmother of the baby. Because that baby is coming. And it is healthy. I see a divine reversal of cancer cells. Your cancer is healed right now. Woo. Ayaraboshata. Ye cantata brosa. Rosato. Turn to someone beside you, lay hands and de declare, you are healed right now. Shall I receive it? Do it one more time because they didn't receive the last one. Lay hands and say, you are healed. about to come off of that medication antidepressant medication you are about to be you're about to come off you are going to go to the doctor and the doctor is going to say you don't need this anymore you drive it, it, it looks like a blue car it's a blue car, it could be anybody. But let me describe this blue car. There's a tear in the front seat, in the passenger seat. It's a blue car, it's a tear in the passenger seat. And you need the car fixed. And you don't have the money. Who is that person?
walk down here. I love her. Stand right here. Stand right here. You have so many needs, but God is going to meet all your needs, woman of God. Just face this way. Face the audience. Ten people run down here and give her $20. Give her $20, just run. And out of what you're about to receive, woman of God, you pay your tithe. Your car is fixed. Already you all are benefactors. And the rest, I want you to now put it on the stage. The rest of you put it on the stage, 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 put it on the stage. When of God be blessed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's yours. No, that's yours. That's yours. God bless you. There are 10 people in here. You have no money in your bank account, none. None in your purse. And you got to get to the end of the month and you've been praying how am I going to do this how am I going to buy gas how am I going to buy food you have no money in your bank account walk from out of this seat and pick up what you need from off of here only what you need only what you need walk out of your seat and pick up what you need God bless you as you give. Somebody shout abundance. There's no such thing as lack for the believer. Shout, I'm a believer. Those of you that have no money, no job, but you made it here, come, be blessed. And as you're being blessed, you better do something with your mouth like an amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't just walk away like that. Praise God as you walk away. Show your gratitude. And those of you that are sitting there with them, shout with them. Praise God with them. That's it, lady. That's that. That's it, woman of God. That's it, woman of God. That's it. I like her. That's it. never pray for money and never ever pray for money I'm a money magnet it loves me it's attracted to me 
in abundance. Just turn to your neighbor and say, money favors me. I, this is the last day I'm praying about money for money. I'm never going to doubt. I'm never going to fear. All my needs are met. I'm out of debt. And I have more than enough. You live in abundance. I'm going to say it again. You live in abundance. There is no lack that a man sounds suspicious. You live in abundance. There is no lack. Money favors you. Everybody that sees you wants to bless you. Everybody that sees you favors you. Wealth and riches are in your house. You have to move from where you are to accommodate your wealth. That sounds suspicious. You need a bigger house to accommodate your wealth. You need a bigger refrigerator. You need a second refrigerator. You need an extended boudoir, not just a closet, but a boudoir. Your community is blessed because you live in it. You are the one that the poor turn to. And you give to people that can never return the favor. Every day, you're gonna do something kind for someone that you don't know. You're gonna be a blessing to your family. This is the poorest you will ever be. I'm going to say it one more time. This is the poorest you will ever be. This is not materialism. Because we bought into the lie and we fight the prosperity message. But yet we pray for prosperity just don't make no sense. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. I decree you are prosperous. Let's go to the Word of God very quickly. Again, Apostle Giles, thank you for having me. And one of the strongest and most profound apostolic and prophetic voice within your generation is here. Apostle Brian Meadows, please stand. He's here. He speaks at all of our summits. And he's a strong voice. Prophetess Francina Norman is here. <laughs> Prophetess Pam Bennett is here. We're born on the same birthday. That's my twin. Um, Dr. Dory McKnight is here. Please stand. She's one of your own, Dr. Dory. She's somewhere here. 
Apostle Melinda Gooch is here. In all the ministers of the gospel, um, as well as individuals that I know personally, like Empress and Michelle, and there's many men and women of God that have gathered here today, there's a concentration of mentals. That means something is about to happen. When you have all those mentals within a region, it simply means that someone prayed the mentals in. And we are here because of the prayers that have been prayed over the years in this region. And there's a concentration of giftings at this particular time that each one of you should make a demand off of. And making a demand simply means that you push your, yourself to the next level when it comes to faith. And you don't allow your spirit to do what you just did. You got all excited and you're way up here and now you sat down and you're way down here. What happened to all that anointing? It's a lack of discipline. You haven't worked those spiritual muscles to sustain yourself in an environment. And you've got to teach yourself how to sustain yourself at that level and not be like this. The atmosphere was calibrated for miracles. And then you sat down and now we need to recalibrate it again. Turn to your neighbor and say, that just does not make any kind of sense. You got to shift back into that gear. Whatever gear you were just in, shift back there. That's it. That's the level. Amen. Our Father and our God, for the time allotted, we pray that you would speak through my lips, think through my mind, let there be none of me, all of you. We pray for articulation of speech, clarity. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would carry the anointing to each seat, to each individual, that you would open their heart to receive the word of the Lord. The word will do, it, do the work, for it is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Even scriptures declared you sent a word into Jacob and it lit upon Israel. Whatever is dormant in us, the next best version of ourselves will be ignited through the catalyst of the word of God. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Bring to life dead things. Quicken what is lying dormant for this season, this time. For this generation we are the solution to world problems and let us see ourselves accordingly and in advance we give you honor and glory for what you're about to do in jesus name amen <clears throat> Take out your notepads, your Bibles, and I'm going to speak as quick as I can, and then remind me at the end to make an announcement. But I want to jump right into the Word of God. 1 Kings 19, 8 to 16, talking about mentals. This is an area of um, expertise for me. I have an understanding of the difference between the anointing and mentals. And I want to give you as much revelation as I possibly can. When you talk about mentals, they have to be actually acknowledged and exercised. You don't have a mental and not exercise it. There's a lot of people that are unaware that they do have mentals. And what we want to do is to show you through scriptures that every believer has a mental. And even in the story of Elijah and Elisha, he asked for a double portion or let me do greater than what you did. And Jesus said that you're going to do the greater work. 
And so mentals are fallen. There's no mental that has ever been taken to heaven. Heaven doesn't need mentals. Because every mental that ever existed is still here in the earth realm. In the book of 1 Kings 19, 8 to 16, the Bible said, and Elijah took his mental and he wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that the two went over on dry ground. It came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing, not an impossible, but it's hard. Nevertheless, if you see me, write the word down, perception, perspective. Perception, perspective. If you see who I really am, if you see me, not based on a title, when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if you get distracted, If you have broken focus, it shall not be so. In other words, how bad do you want it? Verse number 11, and it came to pass as they were went and talked that behold their appearance, a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by the whirlwind in the heaven. There's a lot going on in this text. Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel, the horsemen thereof. He saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into two pieces. A lot of us don't want to get rid of old stuff that belonged to an old season. We just want to keep adding and adding. But in order for you to receive mentals, it means that you've got to divest yourself of an old garment in order to wear the, the new. He took up also the mental of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? In other words, I recognize that is not by my might nor by my power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Where is this God that gave him this mantle? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. Whenever there's a transference of a mantle, the first thing that you're going to see is imitation before maturity. And so we talk about, oh, he just wants to be like so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. Not necessarily. People are trying to figure out what to do next. So even Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So you don't have skill without experience. And a lot of us want to go to the next but we don't have the experience, that's no skill. See a man skillful, he's going to stand before kings. If you want to shift the realm that you're in, you've got to move from revelation to something that is experiential. Write the word down, experiential. The Bible said, and they came to meet him, the spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. Excuse me, I'm jumping ahead of myself. And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went. And when the sons of the prophets, which were in view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, bowed themselves to the ground before him. And it's interesting because this is the power of influence. Now, influence has a dominant anointing, an anointing that makes influence subordinate to it. And this is called 
the power of persuasion. Write it down. This is where you see Esther. Esther just didn't have favor. There was a mental that was operating, and it was a mental that gave her persuasion. Write that down. Because you are going to have the same thing when you walk out of here. This, this persuasion has four different components to it. And we're going to tease this out in a minute. Verse number 16, and they said, Behold now, there be with thy servant fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest preadventure the spirit of the Lord has taken him, or the ruach of God had, had taken him. So we're living in a time now of the new normal. The Bible says that long before we had the pandemic, that God was going to do something new. When God moves in the new, it means that we don't have the skill and the ability that we have to now position ourselves like the disciples to become learners of the new. Many people go out of an old season and they drag their old strategy with them so that the new looks like the old, and they begin to second-guess God. Whenever God transitions you into something new, there is always that transitional period where you're neither here nor there. It's a prophetic limbo that you are in. And it's in that place where you have to choose whether you go back to the old or you trust God in the new. There are two dimensions of reality, the prophetic realm and the experiential realm. The prophetic realm actually gives credence to something that exists but has not yet been experienced by the five physical senses in the dimension that we call time. God will have to pull back the veil that divides time from eternity, the natural from the supernatural, in order for a person to have a revelation of what is, but has not yet manifested in the dimension of time. Time is a dimension that gives human beings the right to experience planet Earth. If there is no such thing as time, there can be no such thing as a place. In order for you to meet someone at a cafe, there has to be a place and there's got to be a time. If you take time away, the place has no relevance. You have relevance and significance because you're in a specific zip code, you live in a zip, zip code, you work in a zip code, you worship in a zip code, but you worship during a specific time. The sons of Issachar was able to give credence that God was going to do something specifically for the children of Israel because they understood the times, they understood seasons to know what Israel ought to do within a specific zip code during a specific time. So let me give you three examples. Joshua 6, 26, so that you can really understand this. Joshua, the walls of Jericho, has just fallen down. And Joshua, with his foot, on the ground, one foot on the ground and the other foot on a stone. He makes this declaration, shifting the frequency of that particular zip code. It shifted based on words. And he said, Cursed be the man before the Lord that raises up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay it in the foundation thereof in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates. 
100 years pass. 200 years pass. 300 years pass. 310, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360, 370, 380, 390. At the 400 mark, a king rises up and has this idea. And he said, I think I'm just going to rebuild the walls of Jericho. Not knowing and not picking up with his five physical senses, that there is a prophetic reality that is about to change the destiny of his firstborn and his lastborn, his baby son and his oldest son. And he has this idea, and with the idea he starts building and his firstborn dies. Coincidence? And then he starts building again, and his lastborn dies. Coincidence? Just because your five physical senses has not been able to pick up what God is doing on your behalf does not mean he's not working. You are not aware of it with your five physical senses. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20. I'll give you another scripture. The Bible said, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by the traditions of your fathers. In other words, there is this cultural algorithm that is working that many of us are not aware of it and it's controlling our focus. We live in an attention-driven economy. In other words, whoever controls your attention controls their wealth and your destiny. Turn to your name and say, pay attention. Just pay attention. If you go to bed at night and you are sleeping with your cell phone, you are being controlled by cultural algorithms that is creating misalignment with the will and the plan and the purposes of God. That includes your success and your prosperity. You are being misaligned, not because of government, but there's a force that is working just beyond your conscious mind that you are not aware of it. So when you say that you're being led by the Spirit, it's a lie. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok is controlling your focus. Mentals are falling and you can't see it because your focus have been broken. Hit your neighbor, say she's talking about you. She ain't talking about me. She's talking about you. You better say amen. You better say I receive it. Verse number 19 says, but with the precious blood, we've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. In other words, he was slain before the foundation of the world because as soon as God had an intention it was done in the realm of the spirit, but it just needed to wait for time on earth. Let me keep building this. That means intentions are so powerful that it will cause a person to become unstoppable. Which of you 
intending to build, which of you intending to go to battle, it's a law. As long as you intend to do something in the realm of the spirit, it is already done. Abraham, take your only son up to the mountain and I want you to sacrifice him. And when he gets to the mountain, did he have to sacrifice? No. Why? It was already done in the realm of the spirit. Elijah, I want to give you this mental. Do you intend to receive it? Because your action is going to testify. Genesis 11 and 6. Genesis 11 and 6. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they began to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined or intended to do. Therefore, write this down. Intentions require the cooperation of imagination which is the faculty of the mind that operates as the eyes of the spirit. Elijah said, if you can see, it was a test of spiritual acuity. Write that word down, write it any way you want, spell it any way you want. If you see me when I leave, you will have your desire. It's all about perspective. It's not just about pursuit. It's not just about passion. It's about perception or perspective. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 19 says, Wherefore also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Watch this. That the eyes of of your understanding being enlightened. Stay woke. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the riches of his glory of the inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to all, towards us with. Write in, in quotation mark. Write in quotes or parentheses. There are 56 dimensions of power that God wants you to operate on. And I'm going to float that as a balloon. Behold, I give you power. And a lot of us are operating on one dimension or two dimension or three dimension because that's all the revelation that, that you have. But if you know that there are pretty close to 60 dimensions of power and each one of us have, have been given access how would you show up in this world when you woke up tomorrow morning? If you knew how powerful you were, you would show up differently. You would not ask for permission to do anything. 
You would have the power. You would have the authority. You would show up differently. You would embody the energy of someone that was powerful. I decree and declare to about tomorrow, starting from tomorrow, you are going to show up differently. You are going to show up powerfully. People that resisted you before are not going to be able to resist you in the days to come because you have power. One of the powers that God gives you is the power of perspective. The Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 to 18 he summons uh, 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 Abraham and he said after Abraham had uh, separated from Lot he said I want you to lift up your eyes I want to give you a new perspective I want you to lift up your eyes and I want you to look from the place where you are a lot of people's lives are not changing not because God doesn't want it to change it's just that they cannot see beyond the limitations of their their, their reality but I decree and declare that God is going to give you a change of perspective. You're going to be able to look beyond where you are. And you're going to see yourself in a different place. God is about to anoint your spiritual eyes. Your eyes have not, your spiritual eyes and your spiritual muscles are flabby because you haven't used them before. But God is going to give you an eye-opening experience. You're going to begin to see differently. You're going to see yourself differently. In Everything is about imposter syndrome. But I decree and declare, you are not going to suffer from imposter syndrome anymore. There are so many believers that are suffering from another kind of syndrome. It's called near success syndrome. You get close to success and then something happens. But tonight, God is delivering each one of you from near success syndrome. You are going to be successful. You are not going to be like the children of Israel. They were right at the promised land, but then their perspective about who they were. They say we are like grasshoppers and they never went over. They had the mental because God said that you are going to be a kingdom of priests. They had a kingly anointing. They had a priestly anointing. In other words, a king, hallelujah, just takes authority over a realm or region. And if they don't have authority, they fight a warfare to gain land. I decree and declare that there was some land that was stolen from your parents and your grandparents. You are going to get it back because the mantle of a king is upon you. A king doesn't act for anything. A king legislates everything. I decree that with this kingly anointing, your speech is about to change. Everything that comes out of your mouth is going to be a decree. I decree and declare that your decrees are going to be fully embraced. God is raising you up with a new mantle. It's a mantle of authority. It's not only a mantle of authority where you take control over regions and authority over realms, but it is a mantle of a priest. A priest uses the mouth just like a king uses his mouth. I decree and declare the only work you're going to do in this season is you're going to work your words but you are not going to work by the sweat of your brow I decree that God is taking the struggle out of your stride I decree that now you are walking differently because you know who you are God separated Lot who is God trying to separate you from who is blocking your vision I decree and declare Every vision blocker is being moved out of your life. Every individual that is assigned to distract you and discourage you, their assignment is up. God has a mentor for you and things are about to change. God said to Abraham after his vision blocker was moved from his, uh, from his life, he said, I want you to lift up your eyes and I want you to look from the place where you are. 
I want you to have a 360 degree, hallelujah, vision of what I'm about to do for you. I want you to look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to state the obvious. You can only see with your eyes. You cannot see with my eyes. I decree and declare this is the last season you're going to be people pleasing I decree I don't care how they see your life unfolding all I care about is whether you see it or not I decree today you are going to have a change of perspective God is anointing your eyes with eyes sub I decree every single day of your life things are going to change I want to ask you a question sit down for a moment if I gave you a million dollars how would you feel and what would you do with it if I gave you a million dollars right now what would you do if I handed you a million dollars what would your mind be like what would your emotions be like what would your perception be like how would you show up in this world and if I raised it to about a billion dollars how would you feel what if I had the power to give you control over all the money in the world right now how would you feel what would you sound like what would you buy what would you do physically how would you sit how would you walk who would you call who would you hang out with where would you live ladies and gentlemen I want to ask you what would you do with all the money in the world who would you do it with what would change in your life now let me ask you a bigger question. If you had the choice to become uber rich right now today, but there was one caveat, and the caveat is that you could not wake up tomorrow. Would you take to waking up tomorrow? Or would you take the money? And I want an answer from you. Would you take all the money in the world? Or would you choose waking up tomorrow? That means you now have found the secret to success. The secret to success is hidden in what you value. You just told me that you value waking up in the morning more than a trillion dollars. That means that if time is more valuable than money, why is it that you waste your time? Why is it that you allow people to waste your time? The most valuable thing that you have you do nothing with your time. You sit home, you decree and declare, but you never put feet to your dreams. You are waiting for someone to do it, but God has given you a mantle by which all things for you become it becomes possible. It's all about perspective. The Bible says that as soon as Lot separated from Abraham, God began to show him Hallelujah, the things that he could acquire. I decree and declare that the spirit of settling is over. God has made you a pioneer. You are not going to wait for someone to pioneer your destiny. I decree the anointing and the mantle of Noah is upon you. I decree that you are charting your own course. The waves of change that is destroying so many people's faith. I decree and declare you are not just riding the waves you are creating the waves that other people are riding I decree that things are changing for you I decree that you would begin to perceive how powerful you really are that the seed of greatness is not just uh, sitting in someone like Elon Musk is not just sitting in someone like um, I don't know uh, whoever it is is that is a multi-millionaire Bill Gates I decree and declare that you've got the same seed of greatness on the inside of you the Bible said that now unto him who is able to do the exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think it's according to the power that works in you I decree to every individual that has a ministry you are not 
going to settle with where your ministry is today. You're going to wake up every day with the gift of time. And you are going to convert time like you convert money to buy things you want. I decree and declare every time waster is driven out of your life by the mantle you are about to receive. And only vision helpers are coming. I decree and declare those that frustrate you. I dismiss them in the realm of the spirit. Listen to me. All of a sudden, people are going to leave you. I don't want you to cry about it. I want you to give them a going away party because they're making room for the right people to come into your life. I decree and declare new mantles are falling. Mantles that are going to give you the ability to strategize your way to success. I decree that you are coming into a season of innovative ideas that you are going to begin to work in your genius zone. I decree that you have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. I decree that you're raising the bar of your expectation that God is giving you a, a change of perspective. The Bible said that God, uh, hallelujah, spoke to Abraham uh, and said, I want to give you a strategy uh, that wherever your feet, uh, hallelujah, is placed upon, uh, I'm going to give you that land. Uh, he didn't physically walk. Uh, he walked in his mind. Uh, I decree and declare the anointing uh, that is in this place uh, and the apostolic and prophetic mentors uh, that have been summoned here. Uh, I decree that you are coming on for life support. Your dreams are coming on for life support. Your vision is coming on for life support. I decree and declare you are getting the pep back in your staff. You are going to go home in the quietness of your sanctuary. And you're going to allow God to download his thoughts into your mind. I decree no more distraction. I decree your bedroom is now a dream room. I decree you are going to dream again. You are going to hear God at another level because you are about to have an eye-opening experience. The Bible indicates to me that there were so many people in the Bible that just through a change of perspective, God was able to work miracles in their lives as long as Sarah saw herself as a barren woman she remained non-productive until God delivered her from the blindness of disappointment I decree and declare you came in here disappointed with people but God is delivering you from the blindness of disappointment you are going to see how you are going to make ends meet. Esther, God gave her a change of perspective. All she saw herself as someone that won Miss Congeniality Contest. She did not see herself as a deliverer until her uncle challenged her by the fact that unless she rose up as the deliverer who me as you at the grand declare you will no longer second guess who you are you are not going to ask permission you are going to rise up and you're going to become everything that God wants you to become I can think of Hagar sitting in the wilderness unable to see the provisions that God had given her she was blinded by rejection and she said all I want to do is die but God opened her eyes to show her the provision that God had made and provided in the wilderness I'm calling you from out of the wilderness provision is made for you you may not see it but if you just open your eyes you would see that the problem you were fighting and 
Goliath you fear is the very thing that you need in order to exercise the gifts that are lying dormant in you. You have the ability to break out of your own financial burdens. You are not waiting for a better job. You are not waiting for promotion. God has given you power to create wealth. I release a mantle upon you. I release a wealth creating mantle. Last year, I asked God, God, I want to double my income. God gave me an idea. And within 10 days from me getting the idea and me exercising the idea I created a product took the product to market six months later I made over a million dollars it did not exist in the natural world it existed in the prophetic dimension of reality called ideas I decree and declare that you are exercising uh, the faculty uh, of innovation. Uh, you are an ideas generating wealth creating machine. Uh, I release the mental uh, I decree and declare uh, as you are walking ideas are coming to you. Uh, ideas are flowing. Uh, I decree you will not second guess your ability to bring it to pass. Uh, I decree you have an idea book. You are writing it down and God is giving you a strategy. What is a strategy? A strategy is a written plan to get from point A to point B without consideration of lack or limitation. I'm going to say it again. A strategy is a written plan to get you from point A to point B without consideration of lack or limitation. I decree and declare this is the last day you you are going to restrict God with God all things are possible he does not consider your lack he does not consider your limitation neither should you I decree that you are now moving into a realm of possibilities God is taking you from impossible to possible shall I receive it I wish I can stay here, but my time is up. Sit down for one minute. It's all about perspective. If you can see me, what are you looking at? In what direction are you looking? If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above and not beneath. Rahab, standing on Jericho wall, in a place that was beneath her. This is beneath you. Living like you live, it's beneath driving what you drive it's beneath you being treated like you're treated it's beneath you it's about perspective my last few minutes let me load you up if you can see if you can see if you can see, we see seven different ways. One, natural sight. If you can see. Two, understanding and insight. You see what I'm talking about? That's understanding. Three, prophetic revelation. This is words of wisdom, words of knowledge 
prophetic utterances. The young lady that was singing, she was singing prophetic utterances. God is going to take you around the world with your gift. And you are going to prophesy accurate words to nations. You will not be restricted any longer. You will not second guess. It is true, and I'm only confirming what you know. The doors to nations are going to be open. Do not be seduced like many of the other young prophets are being seduced. Keep your prophetic gift pure, and you will speak to nations and heads of states. That is the word of the Lord and is as sure as my name is Cindy Trim. Number four, you see through perspective. Number five, innovative ideas. Stephen Jobs, he sold what was a mainframe, a frame of a computer, to raise the money to make the computer, and they bought into it. They bought something that didn't exist. It was his idea. That's all it was. I decree and declare you are so powerful in this season that you're going to sell people on your ideas and they're going to bankroll it. Oh, that's so weak. That's so weak. Number six, you see through vision. Habakkuk praying, interceding. And he's saying to God, don't you see what's going on? Stop them, kill them. And God was like, bruh, it's too late. You should have prayed divine intervention before it manifested in time. It's too late. But what I want you to do, I want you to go up to the mount, uh, up to the tower. And I'm going to download a vision and write the vision and make it plain. Not a vision. The one I give you. Not a duplication of someone else's. Write it. Anything that is written is illegal in the earth realm. Satan wrestling over who had authority and power in the earth realm said, it is written. Jesus said, hold on one minute, bruh. It is written as well. In other words, this is legal. I decree and declare a revolution of Bible reading. I decree you will take that contract and covenant and speak it over your life. Speak it over your children. It is written. Legislated. Take your dreams, take your visions, and write it and make it a legal document and tell the devil it's too late. It is written. And finally, dreams. Abraham, what do you see unfolding? Can you see? What is not clear to you will never be there for you. And what you cannot see coming never comes. What you believe, not what I believe, what I see for your life, what you see for your life. Dr. Trim, how do you know what I see for my life? I can see by the manifestation. You don't think too highly of you. You don't want too much for you. When you go into your house and that couch that you hate, you are the one that wants that couch there. Why? Because if you didn't want it, it wouldn't be there. So when you go home, you, the re you reserve the right to want something different. I want to live better. I want to drive better. I want to feel better. What you see determines what you see. 
And what you picture is what you capture. Your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. Bringing this in now. The veil of time was stretched back for Elijah to peer in the realm of the prophetic. Prophetic gives credence to what is about to happen in time. He saw with his own eyes Elijah being taken up into this realm and he saw that his mental gave him authority in the atmospheric kingdom and on the earth and over the animal kingdom and over water. He saw the extent of his mental. And then he saw the mental falling. And he got ready. He ripped off his clothes. And he said, this mental is tailor-made for me. Mentals are falling. Mental is not an anointing. An anointing is to unction to function, but a mental is worn over the carnal nature of an individual so that the only thing that is exposed is the purity, the authority, and the credibility of the one being called into an office. It is not only the anointing that he has access to, but that person that wears that mantle has access to every prophetic resource, every apostolic resource, every economic resource, every kind of resource that is made available, listen to this, in every dimension in which he has jurisdiction and levels of influence. I know that's a mouthpiece. But a mental includes the anointing. It is not the anointing, but includes the anointing so that when a person shows up, God gives him the power of persuasion. Mentals in the Bible covered JL <clears throat> when the king he met she he met. Caesarea, the Bible said she ran out and covered him with a mantle. And it was prophetic demonstration that although she was a domestic engineer, AKA a housewife, <laughs> her mantle was so powerful that when the military went to war without her, they couldn't destroy the general. And here's this little woman. Her claim to fame was to tighten the tent pegs and to milk the goats and to keep clean the dirt from out of the house and to have her husband's baby. That was her claim to fame until the challenge walked through her door. She said, I got something for you. I may look like a nobody, but I'm getting ready to exercise my mantle. You see, a mantle people can see, but they can feel. They just feel like there's something different about you, but they couldn't put their finger on it. A mental attracts, but it also repels. So that when an energy that is contrary to your mental shows up in your sphere, it's irritated by it. You wonder why people are irritated by you? It's not you, it's the mental. 
In other words, you can operate in this sphere. Why? Because I have jurisdiction in this air area. When they said to Paul, Paul, you shouldn't be over here. You don't have jurisdiction over here. This is our territory. Paul said, bruh. He said, put some respect on my name. Put some respect on my name. Put some respect on my name. I've got jurisdiction because of my mantle. Are you getting this? Say what you want, but I got the power. Let me wrap it up. I wish I could just stay here. We talk about a lot of things. God said to Joshua, Joshua, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I gave you a prophetic mantle. And with this mantle, you're going to have authority over kingdoms and nations to pull down, to throw down, to plant, to build. This is what he said. I don't have any education. I've never been to the school of the prophets. I don't have a mentor. I don't have anyone that acknowledged I don't have anyone that recognized me. And this is what God said, no problem. I'm gonna mentor you. Let's see how you can prophesy. What do you see? <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you? Can you perceive yourself as powerful. That's why you're so different. That's why you don't tolerate. This is what drew you here. You didn't come just because you wanted to. The Holy Spirit drew you here to activate your mental. Well, how do I know what mental I have? Well, who is it that you admire? Elijah said, I admire Elijah. That's usually an indication of the mental you are carrying. The mental is not just there for the pulpit. It's there for the pew. What are you waiting for? And if God can raise you up, and if you can see yourself as next in line, and if you have the courage and the audacity not to ask for permission, because when people don't know who they are, how are they going to help you to figure out who you are? They're going to fight you. You're talking about glass ceilings? We live in glass cages. And if you ever break out, all of culture is going to be like Pharaoh's army coming back to repossess you because they see the value of what you are carrying, but you don't see it. Why do you think you've been fought since you were a little boy and a little girl? Why do you think they're fighting you now? Why do you think they're closing doors on you? They're intimidated by you, but they don't want you to know that they're insecure. So they want you to tone down because they're toned down. Turn down for what?
And if they're intimidated with you and you haven't even exercised your mental, imagine what's about to happen when you go back home, when you embody the energy of your anointing, when you embody it, when you embody the calling that is on your life, and when you wake up in the morning and you take charge of your day, imagine what's about to happen with your family, your community, and in the industry. Government is praying and you're the answer because you have the solution to world problems. You are not a part of the problem. You are part of the solution. In conclusion, I see this place as a delivery room. And you're getting ready to be delivered. Not from demons and devils. I'm not talking about that. You've had enough demons and devils cast out of you. There are two levels of deliverance. One, when a stronghold or evil force is cast out of you and you gain control over your thoughts and your minds and emotions. But the second one is when God births you into a new realm of power that is superior than the one that you're being birthed out of. This is heaven's delivery room. Something is about to happen. I feel anointed. I want you to stand to your feet. God is going to help you to change your perspective. How you see yourself in this world. How you treat yourself. What you do with your time. What you do with your mind. For many of you, the faculty of imagination and innovation. You know what I found out, Apostle Giles? It's not about will, it's about willingness. Are you willing to go to the next level? When Jesus was sh praying in the Garden of Eden, when he said, not my will, but thy will be done. The first part of it was, if it's possible, let this cup. I have a will, and I want to do it, but I'm not willing. And he prayed through until he hit this dimension of willingness. Where you're going takes cooperation. Where I'm going takes cooperation. And it takes a recognition that I don't have to be like anyone else. In this season, you're going to be powerful, not because you're the best, but because you're the only. When you're the only, who's your competition? In this season, let others compete with you, but you don't have to compete with anyone. I'm the only. Are you getting this? I'm the only. What you do matters. Who you are matters. You've got dreams. You've got vision. And you've got enough power to bring it to pass because of the mental that is on your life. It's a mental that's on the church, and you are the church. And when you walk out, you're gonna dream again. You're gonna believe again. You're gonna show up so differently. You're gonna be unstoppable. What are you intending to do when you leave? What do you intend to create? What do you intend to write, to build, to own? Where do you intend to send your children? Where do you, I intend to do it. You get in my way, I'm gonna run you over. Why? 
because I'm unstoppable. I see something for you, something that you saw for yourself, and it's amazing. You're going to travel all over the world, and you're going to fill up stadiums. It is God's will. Nobody knows. What you sacrificed for this, nobody knows. But God does. Before we release these mantles, there are 50 of you that are going to give $1,000 to the Lord. 50. Those of you that know about the $1,000 seed, it's fantastic. Solomon became powerful of a thousand dollar seed when he gave those thousand sheep God said to him you're going to be the wealthiest you're going to be the greatest you're going to be favored I don't have time to teach it but it was a thousand dollar seed that broke the spirit of poverty off, off of me not a degree it was that thousand dollar seed your worries are over. The bills are paid. The 50 people, you're going to walk out of your seat. And you're going to give because you want to. And we're going to anoint you. You're, you're, you're now officially a kingdom underwriter. You're going to always be insulted. Because you're going to say, is that all they want? Please come. Man of God. It's an honor for me to undergird you. It's an honor. Don't you worry about a thing. This is my assignment. It's my assignment. I don't pray for money. I just give seed. I gave a complete stranger a thousand dollars. You happy girl? That's how I roll. I don't even feel it. That was my chewing gum money. Everybody up here say, I don't feel this. Please come, please come, come forward. Those of you that have old fashioned checks, you're writing a check too. Pardon? Joshua Giles Ministry. This is a young black man doing something. The only thing I'm requesting from you is you have, you have integrity, maintain integrity, maintain in, in accountability, and don't fleece and play games with the flock. Feed them. That's what we need in our community. We don't need any more games. And live what you preach. No scandals. None whatsoever. If you have a challenge, you call me. We'll get you through. Come over, come over. Prophetess Cynthia, good to see you. You got a lot of anointings. Come straight over so everybody could come. Come straight over. I never have to think about myself. You think you learn the art of thinking about others. Hey there. I'm going to challenge you. You're going to give this thousand dollars. When you walk away, some of you might have that feeling in your belly. You know that feeling like, why in heaven's name did I do this? But I want you to take one step further. I want you to ask God, God, what field? am I going to prosper in? Is it real estate? Is it IT? Is it medicine? What field will I prosper? Secondly, you're going to ask God, give me an idea. And then thirdly, you're going to say to God, 
the seed that I have, whatever you got left over in your bank account, that's going to be the seed you're going to use to develop that idea, whatever that idea is. I see real estate. I see a portfolio of real estate for many of you that's here. Real estate is your, you're, you're going to have several homes. You're going to have a vacation home that you're not going to rent. You're going to have your own mansion that you live in. Then I see apartment buildings, apartment complexes that you're going to own. Come closer, come closer, come down. You're giving this because you want to. Can you get a mic and tell them how to give? Because there's a lot of people. It's up there? Okay. This is where you guys are going to give, right? You're going to give there. It would have been good if you have a QR code. Next time, get your, get your people, just do a QR code and they can take a picture and there you go. Everyone that's here, there were our about, I want to say 50 women that I should be mentoring. My days of trying to succeed are over. I've had, I'm successful. And there are 50 women that I need to mentor. And I'm going to do it and give you trade secrets. You're going to do some great things. Is there any way we can get their information, Apostle? Okay. And we're, we're, we're going to help you to get from point A to point B. Amen? All right, put your um, phones, whatever you're giving. Praise God for those that are using checks. Amen. Ain't nothing like a good check, honey. Amen. Let's pray over this. Now, Father, we thank you. Before we even receive, let the mantle of Joseph fall upon each one of the givers, those that are in the pew, those that are standing here, those that cannot give, wants to give, those that have intentions, they have a heart, they're in the pew, they could not come up here. I decree and declare that you are now economic engineers and financial gurus. I pray this over each one of us, not just those that are given $1,000, over each of us that are in this place. Now, Father, as we give this seed, we are opening our mind and our heart and our spirit to receive prophetic downloads. You're going to give us instructions. You're going to tell us what to do on a daily basis. We're going to go into our quiet place, our secret place, and we're going to hear from you. And Father, we're not going to uh, judge the words that you're giving for there will be a manifestation for some this year for others it will take two or three years my first idea took me three years before I got it to market and four years before I saw the ROI but I'm still benefiting from it today I pray over your finances I pray over your bank accounts I decree and declare your bank accounts are being filled I pray over your investments. I pray over the property that you own, be it a ministry or a church or your home or your house. I decree and declare that you live in a mortgage-free house. I decree that now this is the beginning of a portfolio of wealth for you. I pray over each one of you that are renters. You will be homeowners. And I decree that you will live in houses that you have never built. And they will be the home of your dreams. Someone else built it, but you're going to live in it. I decree and declare in this new normal, you will have factories. You will have uh, publishing companies. You will have businesses. You will have IT companies. You will own banks. You will own investment companies. I decree you will be the first in your neighborhood to be uber wealthy. I decree mentals are falling now. 
I decree the mantle of Joseph, the mantle of Joshua. I decree the mantle of Esther. I decree the mantle of Jacob, that you will plant in economic hardship and hard times, but you will prosper. I decree mantles of falling, the mantle of Paul, the mantle of John, the mantle of, of, of Ruth, the mantle of Naomi. I decree mantles of falling. I decree the mantle, hallelujah, of Abraham is falling upon you. The mantle of Sarah, that your days of non-productivity are over. I call you blessed. I decree that people that you admire, that those mantles are falling upon you. I break the spirit of stagnation. I decree and declare now, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I liberate your mind. I liberate your, your, your spirit. I decree that your dreams and your vision is being taken off of life support. I decree helpers are coming. I decree your churches are increasing in numbers. Your ministry are, is increasing. I call you blessed. I call you anointed. I call you successful. I call you respected. I call you highly esteemed. I call you highly favored. I bless each one of you. Things will be different for you. I decree that you are a giver. I decree that you are now building wealth that future generations will not be able to span. I bless you now with success. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I decree breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you as you give. Pastor Giles is going to come back. I hope you were blessed with this word. Amen. Go home. Change your pers perspective. Change the way you see yourself. Change how you think about yourself. And change what you do with your time. When you go home, take television out of your bedroom. Take all technology from your bedroom and dream again in Jesus' name. You may take your seat. I want you to do me one favor as I hand this mic back over. One favor. You may take your seat. You want to give, everyone give. If you're giving, amen, please give. If you could take out your phone, usually we go to the back of the room and you buy books. But if you could take out your phone, if you have Amazon, this is the back of the room. There are three books that I want you to purchase. One, Hello Tomorrow. That has the 12 areas you write a vision in your life. Chapter number eight will outline it for you. Number two, Goodbye Yesterday. And then number three, Unstoppable. Unstoppable. And then the last thing, we're doing our first school of ministry live again in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'd love for each one of you to show up. It's kingdomu.net, kingdomu.net. Please write it down. And if you go on the website, there's a free download of a book I wrote for how to navigate the new normal. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. I love you guys. I wish I could take all of you home with me. But God bless you. Amen. word can we just clap our hands one more time come on everybody we can do better than that can we give God praise for Dr. Cindy Trim did you receive the word
did you receive all of the decrees over your life you can't hear a word like that and leave the same way you came amen for those of you that did not have the opportunity to give you can still bring your offering so anyone else that's giving bring your offering to the altar now there are a few more that's coming so we'll wait for you and then there's also giving information on the screen for those of you that want to give that way amen we'll wait for you we'll wait we'll wait Amen. Listen, tomorrow I don't want you to miss out at 9 a.m. We have Apostle Pam Vanette. You heard her minister on our prophetic panel, and she is a powerhouse. Uh, she's given words so detailed and accurate uh, that they've gone years in advance. Uh, words to governments, to nations, to kings, to queens. And I believe that we're going to be in uh, for a powerful experience in the morning. So don't miss that. And then we have other speakers throughout the day. Apostle Brian Meadows is going to be ministering tomorrow. Come on, somebody give it up for him. Amen. My mom is going to be ministering tomorrow. Apostle Deborah Giles. Amen. I don't know how we're going to sleep tonight with all this anointing all this power that's been in the room amen there are others that are ministering tomorrow as well and i don't want to leave anybody out but please uh, make sure that you get here uh, bishop hugh smith who who is the leader of jabula come on let's give it up for bishop smith i'm so honored to be connected to this man of god uh, he's going to be on our apostolic panel uh, sharing the word of the Lord. You don't want to miss that. And there's so many of you that have come from other areas. Um, and again, I'm starting to name names, and you know I get in trouble with that, but I have to. Amen. Prophetess Barbara Calloway is in the house. Oh, they know you. Amen. And, and prophetess, you brought her with you. Amen. I don't want to mess your name up. Amen. I think it is prophetess Aziza Morrison. Come on, somebody. Just give God praise. I've heard your ministry. Amen. For some years. And uh, so many others that are here. Uh, prophetess uh, Brenda Todd is in the house. And Pastor Tommy Todd is in the house. Come on, somebody. Give it up for these generals. Dr. Faith Wokema is in the house. Amen. Apostle Phyllis Morton all the way from Huntsville, Alabama is here. Amen. Some ministry family of ours that we've been knowing for some years since I was a kid. I actually attended his school of the prophets at age 15. Apostle Mark May and his wife, Apostle Pat May, you're going to be hearing from them. We've been in the trenches together for so many years uh, when we were in the small gatherings and in the little places where we saw some of the greatest miracles happen. And when I started preaching and ministering, uh, he was one of those ones that I looked up to that was there uh, kind of leading and, and pioneering the way. And so I can't wait for you to hear his ministry. So many others are here. Uh, and again, I'm getting in trouble because I'm naming names and I'm forgetting. So just tell your neighbor, he honors everybody. Everybody that's in the house. Everybody that's in the house. Uh, Pastor Alexis, Pastor Barry Stevens is in the house. Amen. Let's honor the Lord for them. Amen. Okay. Uh, at this time, are, are they going to do the presentation? Okay, we'll save it for tomorrow. Everyone stand. We're going to let you go. Amen. Did you receive from the word? Amen. Again, meet us at 9 a.m. as we kick it off with our prophetic outpour session in the morning. And then we're going to continue on from there. So, Father, we thank you for everything that you have said and done. We receive the word on mantles that you've released into our lives. We decree that our vision is open. We can see further, and so therefore we can live longer. I decree that we are prospering, and Father, you would cause us to excel. And even as we leave this place, Father, I pray that revival would go with us into our hotel rooms. We've completely shifted the atmosphere in every hotel that we occupy. Let miracles break out in the lobby. Father, let people experience breakthroughs as we go throughout this convention center. 
And so, Father, we pray for your protection and your covering in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Listen, stop by the reception table. If you're coming on the trip next year to Greece and Israel, if you want to come, it's going to be uh, over 14 days traveling in, on ministry assignment, and the package price is out at the table. You do have to pay your deposit to register. If you register tonight, you get $100 off by registering to join us as we travel to the nations, and then please see our vendor tables that are in the lobby. God bless you. Praise your way out of here.